After some discussion, the eight of them decided which rooms to begin with and what order they would go. Nope, still not letting me fast forward. Junpei was chosen to search the rooms on the starboard side, moving from fore to aft. They also determined when they would return to report their findings. The next time the clock sounded the time, uh, the time, when it did, they would meet back in the large central room full of beds. If during their search, any one of them were to locate the missing components, they were to yell for the others. If this strategy failed, they'd return to discuss their options later. The details decided, they left to begin searching. Out into the hallway they went, each to the rooms they'd been assigned. However... From far away, Junpei heard the bell ring. It did so only once. It was 1 a.m. Only five hours remain. Weren't there other doors near the door we opened, or did they all lead to the same place? I guess they did. He jogged through the entrance of the large hospital room to find six of the others already there. Ace, Santa, Clover, June, Seven, and Lotus. Up, oh, and it looks like Snake is dead anyway. So I guess that event is scripted. No matter which door you go through, who you go with, Snake will always die. They had gathered in front of the door number eight. Oh, oh wait, I can skip now! Okay, so yeah, gonna cut this until we have our door choice. Although I might cut after that too, because I think we're going through the same room. Sorry about all the cuts, it's just kind of hard to figure out when exactly to cut and when to include things. Okay, I'm including this because I'm going to answer a little differently. Since we know it's not zero according to Santa's logic, it's either Snake or someone other than the eight of them, but that's unlikely, so let's say Snake. Well, it seems like it would have to be Snake, wouldn't it? Maybe he got back here before any of us. He found the parts somewhere, put them back, and then went through one of the door, uh, numbered doors. No, that's not possible. You have to authenticate with at least three people or the red won't open the door. There's no way a single person can get through there by themselves. Y yeah, uh, I guess you're right. It was a stupid mistake and Junpei knew it. How could he have made such a foolish miscalculation? And how had Santa noticed it so quickly? Perhaps he just wasn't as clever as he used to be. Junpei shook his head, sadly. So in other words, one of us is the person who fixed the red. Santa grinned. Bingo. We have a winner. And now it's the same crap. Okay, we've chosen door 8, but I'm probably going to cut this shortly after, because I believe that was the room we already went through. I, I think I'm going to go with door 8. Okay, eight it is. Yeah. Alright then, that means June's gotta go through seven. What? Why? What? Santa grimaced and muttered angrily to himself, but finally began to explain. If the six of us are going to keep going without leaving anyone behind, there are only three ways we can do it. Plan A. Go through door, uh, go through seven with three, five, eight and go through door 8 with 467. Right. Plan B. Go through door 7 with 457 and go through 8 with 368. Plan C. Go through door 7 with 367 and 8 with 458. Yeah, yeah, that's what I did last time. Okay, I just wanted to clarify that and add the little new bit of dialogue. Because there's probably still some new dialogue, unless I can fast forward it now. And that's it. Okay, I can't. Good. Those are our only options. In other words, 3 and 4 and 7 and 8 can never go through the same doors. You get it now? As Santa finished, June looked over at Junpei, tears welling up at the corner of her eyes. Oh no! You're saying we aren't going to see each other again for a long time? Junpei felt just as June did. 
He wanted to be at her side through whatever trials they were preparing to face, unlike the first time. But he knew if they were to survive, he had to swallow his feelings. In order for the six of them to move forward, he and June had to be separated. He looked at June. He was scared to lose her, but he swallowed, steeled his resolve, and did his best to smile. Hey, come on. You're making it sound like we're never going to see each other again. Okay, we're in fast forward mode. Now I can cut this and I'll be back after we've gone through our room. And gone through up to the next decision we have to make. This seems new because it's not letting me skip it. So let's include it. <clears throat> what kind of job do you have? What are you? I'm unemployed at the moment. I used to work for a cybersecurity firm, but I quit. Why? Lotus blinked. Huh? Oh, um, it was just something. She stopped typing for a moment and her face fell. This was not an avenue of questioning to be pursued, Junpei realized, and quickly shut his mouth. Huh. Last time... He called her old and she got pissed. This time, asked her about her job for whatever reason. Hmm. Lotus' fingers began to move again, and in a few seconds she was back up to speed. Are we now in speed past it? No, we are not. As she typed more letters and symbols that meant nothing to Junpei, began to pour across the screen. Uh, uh, what are you doing now? I'm going to try to and brute force it. Brute what? A brute force attack is... Well, the short version is that it's... Uh, that I just attacked the thing head on. The long version... Without looking up or slowing down, she began to explain. A brute force attack is one of the simplest ways to break a cipher, she told him. It checks every possible combination until it finds the right one. For a complex cipher, it can take a very long time. The thought of doing something like that made Junpei feel tired, but Lotus explained that she was writing a program that would run just such an attack on its own. It's not the most elegant solution, certainly. But given the circumstances, there isn't much else I can do. Even as she talked, her fingers never slowed or missed a key. Junpei couldn't help but feel a little awed. Oh, but back to what we were talking about here earlier. What were we talking about? The wireless display. It's kind of strange that you, uh, if you think about it, isn't it? Question mark? Hmm, how do I put it? Well, let's say you write a program that calculates and additions, addition problems for you. All right. So you enter one plus one. The screen would show you two. See, isn't that strange? Uh, uh. No, not really. Oh, come on, of course a caveman like you would think it was strange. You said so just a minute ago, question mark. You're just not getting it, are you? Who calculated one plus one? The, uh, the main computer, right? You said it's connected to the monitor wirelessly. Yeah, but someone who grew up in a cave wouldn't know that, right? They'd probably think that this thing here, the monitor, is doing the calculating. And once they've decided that, they'd start examining the mon uh, this monitor. They might poke the screen or something. Ah, I see the color changes when I press it here. Then they might investigate the hardware on the inside. Ah, I see. So this wire supplies power. Eventually they might even cut the wires. Ah yes, just as I expected. When this wire is cut, no results appear. Therefore, it must be this device which does the calculations. But the truth is, just like you said, the computer is doing the calculating. But these cave people wouldn't know that, because they have no idea what the monitor and computer are connected, wirelessly. Lotus continued to type. Junpei scratched his head. So, uh, what are you trying to say? Nothing, really. It's just, I thought maybe. 
What if the relationship between human beings and our brains is like that? Huh? Well, let's say you stick a bunch of electrodes into parts of the brain. A scientist examining the signals they send out might say, Interesting. So it simulate. So simulating this part of the brain causes the person to see colors. That must mean the neuron cluster controls that function. Okay, let's see what happens when I cut out this part. Ah, just what I thought. Cutting off this part makes that fun causes that function to cease. Therefore, human thought processes much occur in the human must occur in the human brain. You get it? It's just like this monitor. Maybe the brain is just an output device like this monitor. Maybe our thought process actually occurs somewhere else in the main body. We just don't know it. You never even think about it. Just like those cave people who didn't know about the wireless communications. Hmm. I suppose that's true in theory. You can't imagine that there's some unknown medium that transfers information into our brains where we experience that information as thoughts. Junpei didn't say anything. Not so much because he had no retort. No, her argument just seemed silly. And he was a little surprised to hear, be hearing something like it from someone like her. The brain is just an output device? Human thought actually occurs somewhere else? Did Lotus really think that, he wondered? It was a little creepy, Junpei thought. It sounded altogether too much like a bizarre cultish religion. Not really, it's not a religion, it's simply a thought. Anyway, maybe that's the cause of Seven's amnesia. Oblivious to Junpei's increasing discomfort, Lotus continued. If memory is actually stored somewhere else, in some sort of main body, somewhere, maybe he hasn't forgotten anything at all. He's just having difficulty, a difficult time accessing his memories because the monitor, his brain, has been damaged. I suppose that would explain the aphesis and blindsight, too. Perhaps they actually can speak or see. The monitor just isn't functioning properly. Hmm. I guess people with pro... Oh boy. Prosopagnosis could be suffering from the same thing. W wait a minute. Prosop... What? He knew what aphasia, aphasia was from watching medical dramas on TV. I didn't know it. And blindsight was easily enough to guess. But he never heard the word prosopagnosia before. But you've never heard of prosopagnosia? Lotus spun around in her chair to look at him. Junpei just shrugged and shook his head. Nope. What is it? Well, put it simply, it means a condition where the mind can't distinguish between human faces. In other words, my face would look the same as Clover's or even yours. So they can't remember faces, which is how most people recognize each other. That means that people with pr prosopagnosia have trouble recognizing even people they're close to. Usually they can make do by associating people with other things. Their voices, their clothes, their hair. Does that mean other people... Oh, I'm sorry, that's him. Does that mean other people's faces look like blanks? No, no, I don't think so. You've seen monkeys in a zoo, right? To you and me, all monkey faces look the same. Even though they've obviously got faces, it's almost impossible for a human to distinguish between them. The zoo staff that works with them would learn to identify different monkeys eventually, but you or I couldn't unless one had a scar or something else to set it apart. That's how people would be to someone with prosopagnosia. Prosopagnosia, huh? Didn't even know that kind of thing existed. Junpei did his best to act as though the entire lecture hadn't gone entirely over his head. And, uh, what were we talking about? The idea that your brain is just an output device like a monitor. Are you serious about that stuff? Not really. 
I was just kidding for about half of it. What about the other half? Well, I guess I was just adulting? Not funny. <laughs> Lotus's smile had something rather masochistic to it. It's nothing more than a story I made up out of boredom. Don't take it seriously. It was the first thing that came to mind, and I just talked about it to kill time. But it looks like I don't need to talk anymore. Why? I don't have to kill time any longer. As she spoke, Lotus raised her right arm high and brought it down to the enter key. The program took only seconds to analyze the system. Chunks of text flickered on and off in quick succession, and then a line of numbers appeared, blinked, and disappeared. The screen cleared, and all that was left was the word accept. Accepted. <laughs> Piece of cake. Lotus clearly had patted herself on the back if it would not have made her look entirely ridiculous. After a few seconds, the accepted disappeared to be replaced with nine squares arranged in a three by three square. What the hell is that? Nope, still new. Okay. No idea. It looks like a puzzle. Suddenly, Lotus stood up. Huh? Oh, good. It's skip time. So I guess I'm cutting this here. I have no idea how long this is, but I guess I'm going to go with the uh, approach of um, I'll put all of these in one video. And I'll try to complete the room in this episode. And if I have to cut it in half, I have to cut it in half. See you guys when we get back, whenever that is. Okay, I thought this was the same one, but apparently this is different. <clears throat> I, um, I wanted to ask you something. Question mark? Junpei, you went into door 5 with my brother, right? Did you hear him say, like, anything weird? Why is she asking me this, Junpei wondered. Oh yeah, this is different. Because we went in through door 5 with her brother. The more he thought about it, however, the more it made sense. Snake had been gone for a long time. Clover was quite attached to her brother. Of course she would have been worried about him. He thought back to when he had gone through door 5, hoping he might remember something, even a small something that would help her. However... Sorry, Clover. I can't really think of anything. I mean, he did mention that his hearing exceeds that of a regular person, or something like that, but... That's about it. Okay. Clover's words were barely audible. She nodded vaguely to Junpei and turned to walk away. Uh, hey, wait a minute. Hmm? Look, I don't know if I should ask you things, but... If you don't mind, I was hoping you could tell me if... Uh... Is Snake... Um... I mean, was he born... You're talking about his eyes? Yeah. No... He wasn't born blind. When he was a kid, he got in an accident. A really bad car accident. I kind of switched to Lotus for a bit, but I think I've just corrected myself. He couldn't see after that. And his arm... His arm? Yeah. My brother's left arm is... Um... It's not like a normal person's arm. It's fake. It's not a real arm. The accident hurt him real ba really bad. To save him, they they had to cut off his arm. Wow, Snake was a mess, wasn't he? Uh, I'm sorry, that's weird to speak ill of the dead, but he is. Is that all you wanted to ask me? Talking about her brother had clearly taken a great deal out of Clover. Junpei nodded. Look, I'm... I'm sorry for making you talk about all that painful stuff. Clover only shook her head and walked off down the stairs. Alright, next cut until we get to uh, where we end the episode. Although, let's see, I said I know for a fact that the next thing probably won't be new, although it might be, so I can't really say whether I want to end the episode yet or not. 
So, yeah. Anyway, I'll be right back, maybe? Okay, we've hit new territory, apparently, after the key part. But, I think we're gonna end this episode here. Gonna quit while I'm ahead and move on to the next episode, as that seems to make the most logical sense. I know this part is only like 15 or 16 seconds long. Well, technically now it's 20. I should stop counting the seconds! See you guys in the next bonus episode! <laughs>